Hey guys, so not too long ago, I released a new mini course called Troubleshoot Your House Plants. So I thought I'd take a look at some of the plants that may not look so good in my apartment and go through more of what might be going on with them to maybe help you with what might be going on with your plants. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. All right, so I have this snake plant here and it's looking a little wrinkled and it's looking a little droopy. And as you could see, this snake plant, Whitney, is completely out of its pot. So it literally either tossed itself out or what may have happened is that the potting medium is so dry that it eventually just fell out of the pot. So what is actually happening here is that there is no water getting to these leaves and these leaves are starting to look wrinkled and desiccated and dried out. So we will need to resolve this. So that is also happening with this guy even though this one is planted in this soil. So this is a, I believe, snake plant um, moonshine or is it moonlight? I can't remember the cultivar name. So this one is pretty well rooted in there, but what was probably happening is that I wasn't watering this enough or I wasn't watering it as thoroughly enough. So what we're going to do to resolve that is we're going to take the dry potting medium off the roots. We're gonna inspect the roots. And right now the roots are looking dry, but there's no like mushy bits or it doesn't look like it's infected with any fungus or anything like that. I'm going to just lay this in water here. I'm not going to let it soak for too long, but I'm gonna let it soak for a little bit. You know, this one, super dry, but totally looks operable, so we're not in any kind of bad situation there. I'm gonna soak that one in this water here. I'm just gonna to totally get rid of all this soil. There might be nothing wrong with the soil, but I'd rather compost it. Now, if I were super clean, I would take this planter and I would give it a good wash out just to make sure that there's no pests stuck to this terracotta planter. But I'm not going to be that uh, precious with this because it doesn't seem like there's any insects or bugs or anything along those lines that are uh, affecting these plants. There's no scale that I could visibly see on the leaves. There's no spider mites, nothing like that. So what I'm gonna do is just take this relatively clean terracotta bowl. But um, you know, it's like, do as I say, not as I do. But uh, I would recommend that if you wanted to actually wash this out and give this a good wash with like maybe like an eco-friendly soap or a little vinegar, then that would be an extra wonderful step. And I have this nice substrate right here. So I'm just going to add that to this planter pot. Maybe I'll make a little mess here. And I'm going to make sure that I really root these very well into this planter pot. So this one's a little moist now. And what you'll wanna do to prevent this from happening again is make sure that you water your plants thoroughly. So what I mean by that is that you soak in and around all of the plant, so not just on one little side. That's something that I have a habit of doing, especially if I'm trying to water my plants and I'm watering them really quickly. I'll just water on one side of it and I'll constantly water on one side. And sometimes that constant watering on one side will actually push away some of the soil bits, right? And then it'll cause this hole. And maybe that is what caused this one from falling over because it got unanchored when I was watering it in one place. So you wanna water thoroughly around the edges of the plant and you wanna make sure that it's well rooted. You don't want it to ha just have be sitting on the surface. And if you're only watering surficially, so just on the surface and not thoroughly down, the roots are gonna grow up and they're not going to grow down. And then the plant is not going to be well anchored in the substrate. So then I have this plant right here. And again, you're not gonna let this soak for too long. It's not like soaking a Tillandsia or air plant. It's just about getting the roots rehydrated. All right, so I got both of these back in it again. And I'll push out the roots a little bit so they're not all in one place. 
right? Okay. And now I'm going to add more of this substrate. One of the ways to anchor the plant in is to make sure that the substrate of the potting medium that you're using is all the way around the, uh, the neck of the plant, if you will, but you're not covering too much of the leaves because if you're covering the leaves of the plant, then um, you're covering some of the stomata of the plant, which is the air pores, the pores in which it actually respires. Okay, but I'm just going to put it around where the, uh, where the root of the plants are, is. Okay, or the rhizome. Sometimes, you know, snake plants actually spread by rhizome as well. So here we go. And I'm going to press down so some of the air comes out of the uh, potting medium. And it's not that big of a deal. It's not like I'm really using my fingers and crushing the roots in there. I'm just lightly pressing. So it'll still have air in there. And I'm using a porous of enough substrate that this will re have air pockets in between. So if you're using a substrate that, you know, doesn't have these like perlite bits or, um, you know, lava stones or anything like that, then you might be working with a substrate that doesn't have enough air flow in it. And that's important too, because you want to make sure that the roots are going to get air. All right, so here we go. I have those two in, and they're, they're anchored in really nicely. And what I'm gonna do is actually just pour this water, since I'm all about reusing, even though this is probably not gonna be as elegant as if I had a watering can. And I'm gonna water all the way around. So you see all that water is going down. Let's see if any of the water comes down through here, yep. So I'm getting a little bit of water that's coming down through here, not very much. So about 10 to 20% of the water that you go, that comes, that you've put in, should be coming out in the bottom. And then once this water builds up, then I can actually take this to the sink and get rid of that because you don't want the water sitting in there because if there's excess salts, then it'll get kind of soaked back up into there and that could actually burn some of the roots. So we're gonna hope that these plants actually pull through. I think they actually will, but it's going to have a little bit of a miracle because I'm doing this in the winter months and sometimes the, root, the roots are not going to totally be growing during the winter months. Fingers crossed that this one actually pulls through and I hope that helped you with any of the issues that you might be having with your plants in your home. All right guys, I'll see you in the next episode. I'd like to shout out to Squarespace who is my sponsor for this video. Now all of my websites, including homesteadbrooklyn.com, houseplantmasterclass.com, and even my personal website over at summerrain.net are all built on Squarespace's platform. Now this is for obvious reasons. They are this all-in-one platform that offers up slick, modern designs that provide incredible user experience. Now you could customize their already primo templates, integrate your social media seamlessly, and even send out emails. And oh yeah, if you ever need help, their customer service is dope. So if you're interested in checking them out, you can use my link, squarespace.com slash summerrain for 10% off your purchase. Check out the link in the description below. And if you're seeking more information about gardening outdoors and homesteading in the country, then check out our new channel over at Flock Finger Lakes. See you there.